Hi guys, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT in a smart way, meaning how to create personalized ChatGPTs for the purposes of content creation, for the purposes of having a dedicated assistance for a particular set of tasks, you name it. I'm going to show you one example, which you can use as an inspiration for creating your own GPTs for various purposes. I think it's super helpful. Just check it out and see for yourself if you are going to like it. And we are going to start by, of course, logging into our ChatGPT, you are going to need the paid version of ChatGPT, so the premium one, in order to have the MyGPTs feature. So in order to access the MyGPTs, you go to explore the GPTs on the left, and then in the upper right corner, you have create, which you are clicking, and then you are going to create. So I have prepared a set of prompts that will help us to navigate through the world of ChatGPT. And in order to do that, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks. Let's say that I would like to use my ChatGPT for creating a broadcasts, so newsletters for my audience. I'm going to paste here prompt. I want you to analyze the attached file and write done when you will finish. And what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to go to my files, choose the newsletter archive, so the file that is containing the past newsletters that I have written by myself without any assistance from AI and so on, just so ChatGPT can get a feeling of my style and all of that stuff. And as you can see, ChatGPT is now reading the file. If you would like to get more valuable information about B2B sales and marketing, join our email broadcast where we share resources with valuable information, marketing tools and case studies of successful campaigns, proven scenarios for B2B sales, useful tools, and a ton more to help you improve your sales and marketing game and generate more leads. So in the meantime, I'm going to copy paste another prompt and it was updated, meaning that this particular chat GPT already has all of the information that has been provided to it by you in your own, either in a format of a document or the information that you will write down in the chat. So as you can see here, now I'm giving another prompt. Now based on that file, I want you to create a list of questions that you would need to ask me. If you were a ghostwriter tasked to write email broadcasts for me, matching my style, tone of voice, and overall feeling of the message I try to deliver to the recipient. I want you to formulate questions that will cover all of the necessary information, the topic of a particular broadcast issue, the overall message that I want to share with my audience and all of the details that you would need, blah, blah, blah. What is important here is that you should be as descriptive in your prompts as possible, having in mind your end result that you would like to achieve. And right now I am going to send it to ChatGPT. And as you can see, ChatGPT will provide me with the list of the questions that it would ask me normally. But because I wouldn't like ChatGPT to ask me these questions every single time that I'm writing my broadcast, because this is supposed to actually simplify my life, not make it harder, I'm going to copy paste another prompt. As you can see, now based on the content provided in the file, which is the past broadcasts, answer these questions and formulate a summary. Start with the first 10 questions. And right now, ChatGPT will analyze the file and provide answers to itself based on the historical data that I have provided to it, which is pretty awesome because as you can see, a lot of the things that are here are actually matching the things that I'm doing. So like the most used call to actions, book a call with me, subscribe to the newsletter, watch this video. For example, the types of content that I'm providing, the personal anecdotes that I am using, or the things that I'm mentioning, like walks with my dog and the things that I'm doing, they are just here because this was in a file. So these are the past issues of, of my newsletter slash broadcast. So as you can see, this summary has been done. What I'm going to ask to it right now, because as you can see, there were significantly more questions. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to proceed with the next questions. And as you can see, the, the rest of the stuff is just appearing in here and appearing in here and so on and so forth. It's just for the purpose of it having as much context as it possibly can. And right now I'm going to put in the message. Great, now please incorporate everything that you've learned into this GPT. Make sure with each broadcast ghostwriting task, you will use this knowledge and information right done when you will finish. And I'm sending it right now. And now please 
formulate five questions that you will ask me at each interaction in order to write a best possible broadcast. Okay, so what was the primary topic or the goal? What is the main message? What is the target audience for Brock? Do you have any personal anecdotes, client stories? What is the call to action? Great, please incorporate this in the GPT and save the settings. And right now you can see this wrench here, it's updating the contents of the GPT. And once it will finish updating this, I'm gonna show you how this can work in practice and that it will actually reflect the things that we have fed, quote unquote, to it. Great, I'm going to name it my task broadcast writer. As you can see here, you can add a lot of the things in here. You can hold files, you can provide it with more context. This is why I said at the beginning that this is just an example that you can use for your own purposes. And here I'm going to click in the upper right corner, create, and I'm going to save it. And what will happen right now is that this particular chat GPT will be saved in my chat GPT thingy here. And as you can see, I have my test broadcast here on the left. And what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to ask it. Okay, let's do it like that. Hi, let's write a new broadcast. And what it's going to do, as you can see, okay, cool. I'm going to be asked the questions that I've actually saved in my settings, which is cool. So what is the topic? I have it right here. What is the main message that you would like your audience to understand? Okay, what is the target audience for this broadcast? Do you have any personal anecdotes? Boom, I'm copy pasting right now the answers which I have prepared previously. Cool. And right now, as you can see, I have already the contextual information that I would like to have in my email broadcast. And some of these things, and this is super important, this is not the final message that I would actually send to my audience. But what it actually has done is that it provided me with a lot of the inspiration, which I will probably right now rewrite 20 to 40%, depending on the content of the, each email. But it, as you can see here, some of the things are super relevant for the email marketing. For example, it's personal. With tools like ConvertKit, you can segment and personalize emails to resonate with your audience. It's cost effective. It's much cheaper than ads and yields better ROI when done right. This is all true. I would probably rewrite some of the phrases, some of the wording in here. This is not entirely how I would write uh, the broadcast to my audience, but what it provides to you is the structure, is the, for example, A and B subject lines, which I'm using every time that I'm sending my broadcast. So a lot of the things can be super helpful when it comes to your work and your efforts. And this is what I wanted to highlight in here. So it doesn't matter if you would like to use it to brainstorm on new ideas about content or you would like to get some inspiration for working with your team or writing posts for social media. These kind of personalized GPTs can provide you with a lot of good insights for your content creation efforts, for your brainstorming, for everything that you actually need. It's just gonna speed things up for you. So again, I'm not saying that all AI generated content is good because it just sounds robotic at times, but if you provide it with the context and if you will prompt it right, you can get really good, if not astonishing results. Let me know if this video was anyhow helpful to you. If it was, please do subscribe to our channel to get more valuable information about sales and marketing in B2B. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.